McLevin, update the poll results. If okay, you can. biggest loser was the Steelers, forty uh, percent. Then the Eagles at twenty six percent. Patriots nineteen percent. Rams nine percent, and only four percent on the Ravens. I put, I think we put the Ravens on there because they had that game won. They had the Chiefs in fourth down yeah. twice yeah. on the final drive, and they did everything right. I get the feeling Mahomes won the MVP yesterday. As strange as that's going to sound, because there are times when you look at him and he's putting up four touchdowns in a game, but. When I watched him against a the number one defense in the NFL, and at times they had his number, I didn't think he played a great game, but I think he played a gutsy game. I think he made plays, the right plays when he needed to make plays, and I think he's going to be your MVP. Yes, McLeod. Well, I did. I was thinking yesterday, I said before the show, like that was the first time anyone got to Mahomes. Like, yeah. That was the hardest game he's had by far. They would put like eight guys up front, and Mahomes didn't know what to do. The announcer kept saying he's never seen this. He's never seen this. But he found a way. But if I'm looking at these two teams right now, the Rams and the Chiefs, okay, and maybe I throw in the Saints. Like, if you're looking at the, the hierarchy right now in the NFL, and it changes every single week because we always fall back on, well, they're the Patriots. And somehow the Patriots did not like the Patriots yesterday. Isn't that a move, a play that you go, that's what Belichick would design, not the other way around. And then you see Gronk in the end zone. And, and I swear, I thought that he was out there because he was ready to celebrate. I, I, don't, I didn't think he was supposed to be on the field. I'm like, oh, they're going to flag Gronk for being out there. And then you realize he was out there in case they threw a Hail Mary and he was going to knock the ball down. But, you know, you're looking at, you know, the Steelers host New England coming up. And it's a big game for both of these teams. New England's going to win their division. But now you look at home field advantage. The Steelers have to win this game. Now, they're helped out by the Ravens losing as well. So if you, if you win the division, you get in. It doesn't matter your record. It's that next game where you're going to be on the road. But uh, the Steelers host New England, and then they travel to New Orleans. Here is Tom Brady on the outcome in Miami. They, you know, they made a good play. I think we all have plays in our offense for kind of those desperation plays. And I thought, you know, they did a good job executing it. So they got it to their fast guys. And, you know, it's football's a crazy game. It shouldn't have come down to that. We, asked, I, I think we left a lot more points on the board offensively. And, you know, that's, that's football. You're asking a one-legged Ryan Tannehill to throw the ball 75 yards. Now, when I'm, when I'm watching it, I'm thinking they're going to do the lateral because I don't think he can throw it that far. Because he's been injured. I don't think. So then I was wondering, what if you just put two or three guys to rush the passer and then you put nine guys back at like the 20-yard line? So now I have a concentrated area. I have forces here, like a, like a line of defense, like Braveheart, where you have to go through them with your laterals instead of having everybody spaced out. Because... I didn't think Tannehill could throw it 75 yards. But New England was prepared for that. And I thought, why not just keep them honest with a couple of guys rushing and then have nine guys back at the 20 and the 10-yard line? Here's Bill Belichick on what happened. Yeah, a lot of points scored in the first half and not so many in the second half, but that's the National Football League. All righty. All righty. Here's Kenyon Drake. On the last play of the game. Um, I just saw it was drunk in front of me. And I, I was just like, look, I got somewhere to be. So I had to get in the end zone, you know what I mean? You said you practice this a lot, obviously. But how often does it actually, you know, work or, or look good in practice? Well, I mean, it's, the funny thing is, it's a, it's, it's a walkthrough. And the, and the coaches, you know, we, we don't practice it a ton. And so they make bets within themselves to see, oh, somebody might go the wrong way. Somebody might not get the pitch. So the fact that, you know, he caught in this, you know, this critical situation and, uh, you know, put the trust in, you know, his players to go out there and make the play. You know, I'm just glad we, we all took care of our business and, you know, we ended up on the right side of that victory. He's never going to have a better moment in the NFL. <laughs> He's just not. Yeah, yeah, Paul. Did it feel like every guy in the Patriots defense was waiting for another guy to make the tackle? Like, they're so conditioned that, all right, they're going to keep pitching and eventually the ball will be loose and we'll all just fall on it and call it a day. It, they felt very, like, almost they had a zone defense, but nobody wanted to engage the running back. It shouldn't have been that easy. You know, that that was the interesting part where you go, that that looked easier than it should have. 
And then Gronk back there. And I go, oh, no. Like, I thought maybe he would just fall over, fall forward, and then maybe block him at the end zone. He couldn't even do that. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.